say that it's great to go after dinner, not before dinner, so I'm not keeping you from anything. I'm very honored tonight to, uh, to have been invited to present Bob Miller on behalf of the Foreign Policy Association with this tribute. Bob, I run the National Endowment for Democracy in Washington, and Bob served for nine years on the board of NED. And it was in that context that I got to know and to become friends with Bob. I know how much Bob valued his service on the NED board, and I want to use the opportunity of honoring him tonight to say a brief word about what we do and what Bob's contribution was to that. I know that he would like me to do that because his contribution was really enormous, both to our work and to our development as a global institution. For those who don't know much about NED, it's a congressionally funded but private grant-making institution that has the mission of supporting people around the world who are struggling for freedom and working to build successful democratic societies. We carry out this mission primarily by making grants with congressionally appropriated funds to NGOs in almost 100 countries and by supporting the work of four U.S. institutes representing our two political parties, our trade unions, and our business community that provide training and assistance in their respective sectors. John Herford, who was a colleague of Bob's, joined the NED board some two decades ago and took it upon himself to encourage us to undertake activities in addition to our grant making that would strengthen the bonds linking activists around the world to each other. He also helped us begin to raise independent funds, meaning not congressionally appropriated funds, to support these activities. And working with John Herford, the NED created a global network of democracy activists called the World Movement for Democracy, which held its founding assembly in New Delhi, India in 1999. And we were really only getting started with that work when John suddenly and tragically died the following year at the age of 62. It was then that I met Bob. It was clear from the very start that Bob shared John's commitment to the values and goals of NED and that he wanted to carry on what John had started. He has done that and much more. Working with Bob and the Hereford Foundation, we established as part of the World Movement for Democracy's Biennial World Assembly, which is attended by more than 500 democracy activists from all over the world, the John B. Hereford Memorial Dinner at which Democracy Courage tributes are presented to civil society leaders and movements that have demonstrated exceptional courage in their work and that have struggled for the most part outside the spotlight of world attention. The last two assemblies held in Jakarta, Indonesia, and in Lima, Peru, have honored the human rights movements, and this will give you an idea of what it's all about, have honored the human rights movement in Syria. This was in 2010, before the current hostilities. The student movement in Venezuela, the women's movement in Iran, the human rights defenders in the violent North Caucasus region of Russia, the pro-democracy movement in Cuba, the human rights defenders in Bahrain, and the advocates for the rights of sexual minorities worldwide. Bob has opened each of these dinners with eloquent remarks, expressing his own and the foundation's support for the aspirations of the awardees and for the democratic ideals of the world movement and all of the activists who were assembled at these assemblies. And Bob didn't stop there. At the, fifth, at the fifth assembly, which was held five years ago in Kiev in Ukraine, Bob came up to me quite concerned about what he felt was a deficit of young people at the meeting. As a result of that concern that Bob had, the World Movement established an essay contest in which over 500 young people from all over the world competed for the privilege of attending the next assembly by writing short 
essays on the state of democracy in their countries and what they could do to strengthen it. Bob introduced each of the 15 regional winners and presented, award, and presented awards to two global winners. But by getting these people as awardees of the essay contest, he brought young people, more young people, uh, to the assembly. For the next assembly, we organized in cooperation with Bob another contest, a snapshot of democracy, which, in which thousands of young people, again, from all over the world, participated in submitting, selecting, and voting on photographs, capturing images of democracy in their respective countries and communities. One result of this work was the creation of the World Youth Movement for Democracy that, that connects over 400 leading democracy activists from around the world. And to strengthen this youth wing of the World Movement for Democracy, again, un, the Hereford Foundation under Bob's leadership has supported the creation of Hereford Youth Fellowships, where young people have come to, this, to work at the Secretariat of the World Youth Movement for Democracy from Ethiopia, from Liberia, from Pakistan, from El Salvador, to spend four months in Washington at the Secretariat, expanding their knowledge of democracy and preparing them to assume leadership roles in their movements in their own countries. One of the young people who worked with Bob on this initiative explained to me, and I'm going to be quoting him, how passionate Bob is about empowering young people, and I'm quoting this young person who wrote me about this, empowering young people in democracy movements and ensuring that they can play a leadership role. There have been countless occasions, he added, when Bob has sat down with young activists to listen to their stories, to encourage them, and sometimes to have drinks with them for hours and hours. And I make an editorial comment here that I've never seen Bob drunk. And he went on, he's very attentive, he's friendly, he's approachable. His personality has given the young activist the feeling that he, can, that he genuinely believes in the value that the dynamic energy of young people can bring to the cause of democracy. Bob has done much more than that when he's been on the NED board, playing an active role in our Budget and Audit Committee, and also taking the lead in the creation of the New York Democracy Forum which is a program of lectures and dinners that Ned has undertaken in cooperation with the Foreign Policy Association. Partic participants in this forum over the past seven years have included John Whitehead, who is with us tonight and who first proposed this idea of a relationship between Ned and the Foreign Policy Association, and others, and there are many, but others have included Henry Kissinger, the late Richard Holbrook, the, world, the former World Bank head Bob Zellick, Dick Gephardt, Mary Robinson, and the, the state presidents of Chile, Kyrgyzstan, and Mongolia. Those who know Bob should not be misled by his droll sense of humor and his wry insights. Beneath the surface of this New York sophisticate, one will find an almost Lincoln-esque commitment to democracy and human equality. It says a lot about Bob that what is really meaningful to him is that when he retired from the NED board last January after completing the maximum nine years of service, and I want to note that his place has been taken by someone also who is with us tonight, Jane Kurzman, and we're very happy to have Jane on the board, who was elected to fill his seat. Bob described his service on the board as, and I quote him, among the most fulfilling experiences of my, of my lifetime. Bob is not a neocon. He likes Maureen Dowd much too much for that. <laughs> but he's definitely an American exceptionalist who has a passion for freedom and human equality. And so it's with great pleasure that I now present the Foreign Policy Association's medal to my dear friend, Bob Miller. 